Good evening and welcome to the final session in our Big Room Refresh event series in association with The White Company. My name is Jessica Doyle, I'm the Telegraph's Design and Interiors Editor and over the next 45 minutes we're going to be discussing how to style your home and make a difference to a room without spending a lot of money. Now, I'm going to be joined this evening by the stylist and award-winning blogger Lisa Dawson, who has just written a book on the subject, Resourceful Living, which is out in a couple of weeks. But this evening, Lisa is going to be showing us how to style a mantelpiece or shelf and how to create a gallery wall. Now, Lisa's just joined us from her home in York. Hello, Lisa. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> So Lisa, we're, we're going to start this evening with um, uh, shell styling or mantelpiece styling and I think this is something that's really taken off over the past year hasn't it and not I think not only because of the way it can um, make a difference to how a room looks but also it's a really rewarding thing to do do you find that? Yeah, absolutely. And I think especially over the past year when we've been in our homes, we haven't been able to get out much, um, we've really started to look at our homes in a different way. We've started to look around us and, you know, worked out what makes us happy and what doesn't make us happy. And as a result, we're definitely taking more interest in what is around us and how we're styling our spaces. Um, and you can see that all over social media, you know, loads of people um, changing, updating rooms, swapping things around painting, decorating, so there's definitely far more interest in your home space over the last year because we, you know, we haven't been able to go anywhere else, but it's very inspiring to, to have a look, you know, have a look at social media and see what's going on. So styling shelves, and in my case today, styling a mantelpiece can be slightly overwhelming because you can look at it and think, oh gosh, there we go, big open space, um, but it's actually not as hard as it seems. So, but, but the two main things you need to think about when you're going to style, I mean, this, could, this is a mantle, but this could also be a shelf. The main things you need to think about are height and texture, which is the same as you do when you look around your house so for, for anything that you're doing, is you're looking for that interest to what you're doing. So height is really important. If I were to layer this up with a load of low level things, it wouldn't look nearly as appealing because it wouldn't be directing your eye anywhere. So you need to think about the height. Yeah. So, yeah, so the first thing um, that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a plant. And I'm going to add a really big plant, actually, <laughs> just because I have one. Uh, so here's a cactus. So greenery is absolutely essential in a room. It brings the outside in. Um, it's also got loads of... Um, uh, uh, you know, good properties, it makes you feel good, having plants around you gives you a boost, um, there's lots of, you know, mental health things associated with plants, so adding plants to your displays is really important. So starting off at one end with a big one, a big plant, um, really does make a difference. And what you're going to do is you're going to build up your display from there. So you want to start here with the height, and I said before that varying height is so important when you're doing any sort of styling um, and adding texture too. So the first thing we're going to do is add something to the other end, and then we're going to work our way through. So what we're going to add is a vase. I'm going to grab that now. So it's quite a big vase, but it's quite a big mantelpiece, and it depends on whatever shelf you're doing. Uh, so I'm going to put this at the end, and this is a really lovely textured um, textured vase um, in a really gorgeous neutral colour. So I'm going to put that at the end here. And then I'm going to pair it with another vase. In fact, I'm going to pair it with two vases because one of the key things when you're creating a display that is going to draw the eye um, is to do it in an, an odd number. So it doesn't matter whether that's three, five, or seven. The odd number draws the eye to different areas. Even numbers don't. This is a true fact. So I've heard. Um, so I've got two here. One is again a lovely grey um, that goes with that neutral. Um, beige and then I've got a nice olive colour. So these colours are all very complementary to each other. So I'm going to group these together. Lisa, just to sort of 
point out, I know that um, all these things are things that you've um, just sort of found around your home, aren't they? I mean, would, would you, just, um, yeah. if you were going to start a shelf from scratch, would you just sort of have a look around your house and see see what you've got? Around? So one of the key things I always talk about is shopping your home. So you might think, that you've got nothing to put on your mantle or your shelf, but actually you've got loads of stuff, you just, it's in different rooms. What I do, whenever I want to restart an area, it doesn't matter whether it's a shelf or whether it's a corner of my room or whether it's a side table or a coffee table, anything, I will have a look around my home and find some key pieces, some pretty pieces that I like, um, and I bring them together and I put them in a pile. And from there, I can pick out bits and pieces that go together and, you know, curating a collection from that, for example, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, so maybe pulling together items around your home in a similar colour or a similar tone or a similar, you know, uh, material. So maybe glass all grouped together or maybe different shades of pink, which is what we're about to do now. Um, so have a look around. You, you'll, you'll find that your home is full of things. I have got a lot of plants in my house and those poor plants get dragged from one side of the house to another um, I'm always rearranging and changing the way they look just to give a different feel and look to yeah. the space so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do again we're going to group in a three but this time we're going to group it in a color so again these are things that I found in my house so this is a lovely pale pink Quite difficult to see in this light actually but it's a pale pink um uh, a pale pink vase so i'm going to put that up there and then this is a slightly cheeky little vase by this kamish so i'm going to put that next to it again it's a similar tone and then this here um is a i actually got this from a vintage shop called pan picks actually which is an amazing little shop you should go and check it out so this is um a shell but it's a vintage one so it's quite nice um again so this is adding texture to your display so mixing up at the moment we've got um ceramics mixed with some nice shiny you know glossy china mixed with plant mixed with some um matte ceramics over here and now we're adding a textured um a textured shell so that looks quite nice there shells are actually absolutely brilliant and um, whenever i go on holiday i always pick up something you know whether it's a stone or rock or a shell and i always bring them home because they not only add that texture they also bring the natural feel into your spaces which mm -hmm. is what you want so next of all next we are going to add another plant because you can never have too many plants so this one here is a trailing plant. Trailing plants are great. This one is really easy to look after and really easy to grow. Um, this is a trailing monstera plant. You've probably seen the big ones of these, but this is a trailing one. And um, you can get these in your local garden centre, but they grow really quickly and they're really hardy. I need plants to be hardy because I can all of them. So I'm going to put that there. So that just adds, again, you're playing with scale. So it's, you know, there's a height there and it's going down below and it's just making it all look a little bit interesting. It's drawing your eye. So next of all, we are going to add something a little bit quirky. So adding fun things to your display, um, just again, makes it a bit interesting. So let's add these. So these are a couple of leopards. The candle's just falling out. Hold on, let me just turn it back in again. So these are actually just from TK Maxx online. Um, they're actually on sale at the moment, I think. Very cute. So I'm going to add those to the centre. And again, they add a bit of gold. They've got some gold on them. They're a bit of a fun piece. Um, and they've got some lovely lilac candles in. Again, adding that extra interest, that bit of colour. And where else, um, Lisa, would you recommend for finding, if, if you do want to add a little something to your mantelpiece, um, you mentioned those are from TK Maxx, are there other places that you like to go and, and find just a little extra ornaments and things? Yes, I mean, I absolutely, I love going to vintage shops, to charity shops, it's, I always manage to pick up something nice, you know, when I'm there, which just adds mm -hmm. to a collection. Uh, when I'm styling a shelf. So charity shops are a great place to go. Second-hand shops are a great place to go. Um, TK Maxx is good. Again, that's home sense. Um, JYSK are amazing. I'll show you something that I got from there. It's not called, it's actually called Jusk, Jusk, but it's 
spelled J-Y-S-K. Um, they have a load of, you know, small items, which are great. Um, John Lewis has got loads. Um, I always, uh, they've got loads of, you know, sort of nice, they've got a whole area of nice brass ornaments. I've got quite a few of those around my house. Um, yeah, I mean, but I would definitely, my first stop would always be the charity shop. So next up, we're going to add this again. So this is from Yusk. Um, very recently priced. Um, again, it's got that texture. It's a shell. It's a coral, not the real thing. Um, it's a faux coral, but it's got that lovely texture. It adds a bit of interest um, and super reasonably priced as well. So we're going to pull that into here. There we go. So you can play around with it and do what you want. Um, but the idea is that your shelf or your mantle is drawing interest. You know, it's making the eye move. It's making, you know, it's causing excitement when you look at it, which is what you want. And then finally, I'm adding this. Again, this is from Use, and this is a paperweight. So I've got a couple of these, and I, they're all over my house. They're $5.99. Absolutely oh, good. So just adding that in there just to finish it off. So there's a pleasing array of items, different heights. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's appealing to the eye. So the main, the things that I would probably pull out from there, um, if you're looking for tips, would be uh, group in threes. Again, the, odd, the even odd thing. Um, add things which are, will make you smile, so something with a bit of fun like the candlesticks. Um, and add texture, really important. So mix up those textures. You'll notice that there are countless textures and there are lots of different things, um, lots of different textures to make you, um, you know, you want to reach out and touch them. They're great. And then also greenery. Um, which is a massive joy bringer. So yeah. So you mentioned, Lucy, you have um, a cactus and a trailing monstera there. Um, are those both plants that can take low light? Because I think a lot of um, someone's pointed out that uh, some mantle pieces don't get a lot of sunlight. Um, are, are there other plants that work particularly well? Yes. I mean, do you know? I was actually asked this question the other day because I have very mixed um, mixed mm -hmm. success with plants. Um, the ones that I found which really work for me are monsteras, which are amazing, um, and they like it behind. So I keep my monsteras behind a window. So as you're facing the window, I put them to the left or the right. So they have brightness, but they don't have sunlight. I've never had a successful plant that's been in the sun, to be honest. Um, and another plant that I have in my house, which always works in a, in a you know fairly shady, dark place, um, is a Boston fern. And I've had several successes with those. They generally work quite well. Um, but cactus are generally, you know, I haven't really had. I'm just trying to look around to see what else I've got, which has been yeah. successful. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's a few. But, I mean, the, my, my go-tos are always monsteras and ferns and cactus as well, um, which are generally quite um, bomb-proof. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I did a blog last week. Um, you can go to my website. I got um, lots of input from people who know what, they talk, what they're talking about, like Dermot Gavin, for example. <laughs> That's what he's talking about. And he gave me a list of plants which are pretty much unkillable um, and can survive in anything. And I've got them in my blog. So if you went to my website, um, you'd be able to see that from my last blog post. Yeah, great. Um, and if someone had a slightly sort of shallower um, mantle piece, I think your, yours looks like it might be quite quite a deep a deep mantle. Yeah. Um, would you just sort of scale down the pots and then add height? Absolutely. I mean, I've really gone overboard here because it's quite a deep space. Mm. And also, I've got a mirror. I mean, if you haven't got a mirror, you could back that up with a print instead. You could just pop a print and then put some um, arrange some ornaments in front of it. But yeah, I mean, I've gone quite deep there because of the depth of my mantelpiece but obviously you would just you know just change it the thing that I always say when you're doing anything like that whether it's styling a room or styling a shelf or styling a mantelpiece is keep going until you feel you want to stop right, right. there's no rules to doing these things like you it, it, it's what you think looks good so if you're happy with the way it looks then it's fine so take away pull back you know add take away until you feel happy with it and that's what you should think because this arrangement you know this makes me happy it might not make everyone happy but it makes me happy yeah. so you know take away add and then you'll know in you know in your gut when it feels right because you will look at it and think god that looks good mm, yeah 
And a few a few readers um, posted questions ahead of the talk uh, who had sort of quite traditional style um, fireplaces with quite sort of dark um, fire surrounds. And they said they wanted to make them look a bit more fresh and, and modern. Do you have any thoughts about that? Any sort of colors that maybe would work to freshen up a very traditional fire surround? From what you're going to put on the mantle? Hmm. Yeah. Again, I would massively go for plants every time. Um, and I would use maybe a nice bright print if you haven't got a mirror above it you know, get a really good colourful print to put above it, prop that against it, and then maybe add some bits and pieces in front of it. Um, I mean, anything, I would just add, just add in the colour really. Greenery, texture, layers, and that's really the way to go. And how, how often would you, um, would you sort of rearrange your shelf or mantle, Lisa? Is it something you do often? <laughs> a lot, yeah. <laughs> I'm, so I'm a big one for having a switch up. So uh, it's actually a really therapeutic thing to do, I think. Um, I often, on my, you know, my shelves or even a room, just having a switch around and changing things, swapping some things between rooms, um, you know, it's easy. It's really easy to look at your room and go, oh, God, this room, you know. If, when, as soon as your room stops bringing you joy when you walk into it, you yeah. should look, walk into your room and go, this makes me feel really good. And if it doesn't make you feel good, then take it all off, like put it all in the middle of the room and then, you know, switch it all about and rearrange it. Yeah. In my book about dividing it into three things. So if you're looking at your shelves and they're not making you happy, take it all off, take it all off, divide it into three piles, things that you love, mm -hmm. really love, things that you love but you don't really want to go in the room anymore, and then things that you don't really don't love, and then charity shop for things you don't love, put the other things in the cupboard and then only keep the things that you love. Then go around your house and then find other things that you really love and put them together and then have a bit of a rearrange. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great advice. Thank you, Lisa. Um, and then so I think moving on to start on arranging pictures, um, you've got a lovely gallery wall just to the side of your mantle there, haven't you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa really is the expert on gallery walls. I mean, how, how many do you think you have in your house, Lisa? Oh, gosh. I don't, well, gallery walls, I've got a few, but I have a lot of pictures. <laughs> I must have hundreds of pictures. Mm. An addict. <laughs> and so where would you start? Because I think a lot of people seeing, um, say, the, the corner of the room like that, wouldn't necessarily think of hanging art in that way. Um, you know, just one picture would look a bit odd on its own, but the way you put them all together, it creates a real feature of it. Um, where would you start with that? Do you, did you start with one artwork and then work out, or how did you how did you put that that gallery wall together? Well, whenever I'm planning any sort of gallery wall, um, what when I'm planning any sort of gallery wall, what I do is I curate. I pull together all the pieces I want to put up. Now, also, it's an absolute myth that a gallery wall needs to be expensive because it doesn't. On my own walls, I have got everything from um, pictures my children have drawn, framed. I've got old tickets from concerts we've been to. I've got old pictures that my mum has given me from when I was a child. I've got stuff I picked up in a charity shop, limited edition prints, photographs, everything. Um, I have, you know, there's, there's everything, anything. If you love it and you want to put it on your wall, then that makes it art. It doesn't have to be anything particularly special. So this corner, for example, here, um, this is a collection of pieces that I've collected over the last couple of years. Um, so you can see here, there's no rules to it. I've mixed all this up. So there's limited edition print there, and then there's black and white photography, um, there is an artwork up there, an independent artwork, and then there's a vintage print at the top. Um, charity shops are a brilliant place to go and look for art for your walls. And independently, you put one of those pieces up by itself, and it might look a little bit boring, you know, or, you know, it, 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 one, you know, especially if it's a vintage print, sometimes it can look a little dull by itself. But when you collate it with a, lot, with a load of other prints together, it creates a feature, which is exactly what it's done here. So these are all lovely pieces of art independently by themselves, but brought together, they create a feature. And again, it's that letting your eye move to each piece. So, you know, when you come into the room, that corner, and anyone who's got chimney alcoves will know this, they're really difficult, actually, to know what to put in them sometimes. Um, they're difficult areas, unless you've got built-in 
you know, units or whatever. They're difficult areas to decorate. So actually, curating art in a corner um, makes it a little bit more interesting. And that was a very difficult corner to decorate. So when I put the art on the wall, um, I was really pleased with it. And what I've done here, I don't know if you can see, is I did what I discovered the other day. It's called um, a French hack, where you hang the art all the way to the floor, which is another thing I really like doing, because why not? You know, if you've got the space and you've got nothing below it, then why not take your art all the way to the floor? Yeah, absolutely. And you, you have a mix of frames there as well, Lisa. Is that something that you that you like to do? You like to mix up different styles and colours of, of frames to yes. add? I mean, that's another um, question that I'm asked a lot. So you can see what I've done here is I have mixed. There's wood, there's black frames, and there's white frames, and then there's an, an ornate mm -hmm. frame. Um, and it doesn't matter if you mix them. You can literally, you can do what you like. Um, the only thing I would say about mixing frames is that I wouldn't have like five black frames and then one white frame. You know, don't do it in blocks mm -hmm. of color, but you know, spread them all out. And when you're going, you're planning how you're gonna put it all on the wall, um, take that into account. So a way that I hang art, and I always have done, um, is unbelievably ridiculously simple, is I put it on the floor, I put everything that I want to go on the wall, I put it on the floor and then I arrange it, so for example in the shape, depending on what wall I'm putting it in, um, put it on the wall and arrange it how I'm going to do it. And I have it set out on the floor before and then I just put one piece up at a time in that same order. So it, I know it's ridiculously simple, but it really does work. And how, how do you decide on the, the spacing between the pictures? Do you measure that out or um, how do you sort of no <laughs> <laughs> I have to say I do do it entirely by eye you can yeah. do it um but what you'll find is that once you've got one piece up and you start to work your way around you'll find it will just come naturally to you and you'll be able to see what you're doing and the spacing will be quite consistent mm -hmm. great and um we have a question from Anna who says when you have a very large picture um do you think it's best to hang it on its own or to then hang smaller pieces around it too I have to say that I hang, I do hang very large pieces by themselves. Mm -hmm. But you know, if, if you don't, you, you can hang a, a large piece with a lot of small, but you could maybe with a few more smaller pieces. But again, try and, try and stick to that. Um, if you're going to do that, then sort of go for an uneven number of, on the other side, just to make it, to make it sort of a bit separate. But I would suggest personally, I would say that if it's a big piece of art, then it's a feature in itself, and it probably doesn't need a lot of artwork around it. You pro probably just needs to be there by yeah. itself. Um, and I suppose the, the big question is how you hang it. Um, what kind of fixings do you use? Do you do you use picture hooks? Do you drill? Um, how how do you do it, Lisa? I use everything. <laughs> everything. So if it's a light frame um, with a with a uh, is it the acrylic front, I think it's acrylic. Um, if it's a light frame, then I tend to use uh, command gram strips, which are really good. Um, you have to follow the instructions to the letter. So they're basically like Velcro strips that you stick together and then you stick them to the wall. Um, you need to make sure you follow the instructions because otherwise there could be a disaster when you peel it off if you take them off. So you need to follow the instructions to the letter, but they're really, really good. And I've used them to great effect in my house all over. I will always use a command strip if I can. Uh, next up from the command strips, I use gold picture nails, which are the ones that you just tap into the wall with the hooks. Um, I will get away with them as much as I can um, if the weight can take it. And the next step on from there, I will drill up. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. Um, but I've never had a picture disaster as yet. <laughs> that's a good thing about the command hooks, is that you can really um, move things around a lot if you have those yes. oh, yeah. artworks yeah. around. Um, and I suppose that that can have a really sort of transformative effect on a room as well, can't it? If you move artwork from room to room occasionally, do, do you do that with your gallery walls? Do you have to then really do? Yeah, I move art around all the time, um, mostly because I'm generally always <laughs> swapping rooms around and maybe decorating areas. But uh, there's pieces in my home that have been in pretty much every room of my house. Um, I love it and I think you can totally change the look of a space by swapping the art around. And again, you know, going back to that, the room's not making me happy. I walk in, I'm a bit, oh God. If, if you really, you know, swap the art around, it's just, it's a simple thing. It doesn't cost you any money at all. Just swap it around, 
try something different in its in its place. You know, I've got artwork in my bedroom that I've moved all over the house. <laughs> you know, it's just it, it looks different in different spaces. It can bring a whole new element to yeah. your room. And do you do do you light it? How how do you light it? I and mean, you can see there you, you have um a table lamp there that's that's um sort of casting light on it. Do do you use anything like picture lights or um I don't, but I know that you can. I have never used them, to be honest, because I've got quite um, high ceilings. Yeah. So it's quite a, a light space. Um, I haven't used them, but I would, yeah. <laughs> for sure. I think they're really good, those picture lights, especially if you've got a quite a, quite a gloomy hallway or a landing yeah. um, with no natural light, then I think they're amazing. I think yeah. they're great. Yeah. Um, and a few people have asked about hanging family photographs. Um, would you hang lots of family photographs in a group in a sort of gallery wall style or do you think it's best to mix them in with with artworks and prints and things like that as well um no in my previous house actually i had an entire wall um filled with framed family photographs both old and new um and i just put them all together it's the it's the grouping it, it's creating a collection of them which is what creates the impact so if i was to put family photos on the wall i have got family photos but they're kind of dotted around but if i was to put them on the wall if i had a lot that i had to put up so say you have maybe 10 or 12 then i would definitely um put them all together for impact mm -hmm. really and also it's a point of interest yeah. you know people want to go oh that's interesting and they can look at your pictures and it's just something it makes it more interesting when it's grouped as a collection and it that goes for anything yeah. really you know collect um a collect colored glass from charity shops and by itself it looks like a boring piece of colored glass when you group it with lots of other lovely pieces of colored glass it creates a collection mm -hmm. so it's just it's that way of just a different way of looking yeah, at it yeah um, yeah um and then when it comes to to framing that can obviously get really really expensive um did you have any tips for sort of keeping the costs down on on that Yes, so I tend to um, I tend to buy everything off the shelf unless I can't because it is not the shape of something off the shelf. Mm -hmm. So I go to places like the Range, which are absolutely brilliant for um, brilliant for picture frames. Also, places like B and Q, which you probably wouldn't consider, but actually they've got loads of frames and they're a really good price, and they do big poster size ones as well. Um, Wilco is also really good. Um, Ikea, of course, are brilliant, um, and you can order them online as well. So those were, those are probably my go-tos for off-the-shelf frames, which I try to use wherever possible. Um, if I don't um, go, use you know, off-the-shelf the, off the frame, off the shelf frame, then I will go to a company um, called Easy Frame, who are online. Um, I think I've written about them in some of my blogs and you can just put in your dimensions. So in fact, I ordered one today for a print that was about this size and it was about 12 pounds, but that's with a mount and it's made to measure. So not too bad, it's a lot cheaper than you would expect. Or you can go to your local framing, you know, if you want to support local business, you can go to your local framers yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, and so some, someone has asked about mixing colours with black and white photography, which I think it looks like you've done there with that wall. So, so that's something that, that you would do a lot as well. You... Oh, totally. I love mixing. It's the juxtaposition. That's what makes it really interesting. Yeah. So it's just the unexpected. That's the thing that gives it a bit of a wow. Yeah. Great. And then um, would you like to show us your the other gallery wall that you have in that, in that very room, Lisa? <laughs> You're out? Yeah. yeah. Which is really, I think, um, spectacular. Okay. So this is, um, did you have this done last year? Yes. So it's quite difficult to see, but this actually takes up the entire wall. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, it actually takes up the entire wall. Um, and I saw it, um, an American blogger did something really similar about 10 years ago, and I pinned it on my pin board. I was desperate to do it for years and years. Um, and I spoke to Hilda and he said, oh, I made that for you at MDS. And we basically planned it out and he put it up. And it's literally made out of MDS mm. with brackets on it. Okay. Um, and then it's printed. And uh, we planned it by, we drew a picture of, like drew a square, which will be the wall. And then we divided it into a grid. <laughs> And then we just blocked out 
you know, like created the holes from blocking out the grid. Right. And it's really well. So you can see I have some of them. So, you know, there's some small ones there uh, just for, you know, key pieces. And then I've got bigger pieces of art up here. Yeah. And then, you know, it's all, it's there. So all, the, all the spaces are slightly different. Yeah. And did you, um, did you have all the artworks ready? Did you know what you wanted to put in those frames before you, but, but before you had it built, did you know what was going to go in each, in each? I didn't know, I didn't know what was going to go in each. I um, knew that I wanted, I had one really big piece, which is that piece there, mm -hmm. also that piece there, and they were the biggest pieces. So I knew that I had to have, um, I had to have uh, squares that were big enough to take those. But the rest of them, I kind of like freestyled it a bit, mm -hmm. um, and then I was—I collected a load of artwork. I, I basically made all all the squares were big enough to be able to take a sort of standard sized piece of art, nothing huge. Yeah. Um, and then I curated, I collect, I collected the art over the course of about six months, just bits and pieces. And as you can see, there's everything on here. Lots of this art I already had mm -hmm. in other rooms. And I just pulled it because I thought it would all look nice. And then I thought, there's a picture of my dad up there in a, in, in a frame. Mm -hmm. um, there's an oil colour, oil painting down there. What else have I got? I've got butterflies down at the bottom here. In the thing. Yeah, there's all sorts. There's loads of vintage you can't see, but there's actually lots of vintage art that I got from charity shops. So I just pulled it all together um, and then put it, put it on board. And I guess you can sort of move things around as well because... Um, You'll be, is, is that something you'll plan on doing, just sort of shaking it up? Every oh, yeah. I suppose I haven't done that yet, actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously, it's a very easy job just to clear it all off <laughs> and, you know, rearrange it. And the benefit of doing something like this is that you can, you can do what you want with it. Like, at the moment, I've got art and ornaments on it, but, you know, I could put art and books on it. I could use some of them as bookshelves. Um, I could take all of the art off and put something, you know, put all ornaments in there. You can do anything you want with it. It's really flexible. And actually, because um, most of these pieces of art are quite small, I've used command strips on nearly all of them. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, yeah, really easy to, really flexible. And how, how deep are those shelves, Lisa? Because you've got, you're able to sort of display quite a lot on them as well. Yeah. Yes. I want to say 40 centimetres. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean they can fit. They can fit a vase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's lovely that you can you can have a an artwork, but then you know that like we can see here that the jug just in front of it, and you can display more than one thing in each in each box, which is really clever. Isn't it? I mean, when, when I first um, when they first went up and I put the art in, I was like really minimal. <laughs> probably realized I'm not very minimal but I was quite minimal when I put it up and then gradually I sort of added pieces in but you know talking earlier about adding so these are just these are shells that my children decorated about 10 years ago on holiday there's a load of them and I've just laid them out on the shelves it's just personal touches you know your shelves anything in your house is there to please you you know it doesn't you don't have to do it to please anyone else I, you know, what I have on my shelves, I've got, you know, rocks from Mexico and all sorts of stuff. It's stuff that I really like and that appeals to me. Um, so if you love it, then you stick it yeah. And are those, are, are the shelves, are they floor to ceiling? Yes, they are. So they go right up to the ceiling and right down. Actually, no, they're slightly off the floor at the bottom. They're, um, they're hung. You can see a picture of it on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, they're slightly, they're on a bracket across the bottom. So they're about that, about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Sue was asking, how how are the shelves sort of held together? How are they fixed together? So there's one big bracket across the bottom. Mm -hmm. If you go on my Instagram, you can see a photograph of them in the whole mm -hmm. thing. So there's a bracket across the bottom, and then there's also a big bracket that goes across the top. When I say bracket, I mean um, a big a, a piece of wood, like a long. Can't think of the word. But a big long piece of wood that's nailed to the top yeah. shelf, and it's the tiny little those little metal, um, which are L shaped, the little metal mm -hmm. brackets. So they're dotted around. But um, Mike, who did it for me, he put them in. So it's, they're quite secret, so you can't see mm -hmm. them. They're they're in places that you wouldn't be able to look. So that they are attached directly to the yeah. wall. Yeah. So that's, that's the wall behind it. Obviously, that's not a shelving bag. Mm -hmm. This is the wall. yeah yeah. yeah. Um, so it's really a case of sort of finding a good carpenter and showing 
what yeah, you want them to do and then they should be able to sort of make it make it and, and fix it for you how, how yeah. long did it take to to have that to have that done Lisa um it took him about three days four days mm. long. and then the painting took a bit longer um but it wasn't I mean, if, uh, he's really good. You know, if you find someone um, who is really good at this sort of thing, who knows their stuff, um, it's not a big job for them. It's just It just needs to be worked out and calculated in advance. And doing that grid and working out how the spaces are obviously makes it so much easier. So they're all made up of blocks of, I think they're blocks of, I want to say 40 by 40. I think they're blocks of 40 by 40. And then some of four blocks in one or three blocks in one. Yeah. Um, we have a question from um, Kerry who wants to know if you have a deeper piece of furniture, so I suppose a sort of a side table or a, a sideboard or a, a, a deeper shelf, do you have any tips for that, for sort of how you would group things together um, on a surface? Um, again, I would be very similar. Oh, I'm myself to back. Sorry, sorry, I think there's a, a talk back. Um, I would do pretty much exactly the same as I've done on my mantle, really, because that's quite a deep space. Start at one end, you know, maybe with a lamp, a tall lamp or a plant, and then just work your way in. Um, but again, use that layering effect. There's nothing worse than seeing something where everything is all the same height. You want to avoid that. You want it to look, you want your eye to be drawn up and down to different areas of the, of, of the, of the sideboard. So you want to mix up the textures. Um, group again, group in threes, group in odd numbers, maybe put a print behind. And also the print doesn't have to be central, you can have the print slide to the left with the plant on the right. You know, just have a have a go. But just keep at it, keep trying until you're happy with it. But there's no rules really. Just I the only thing I would say is that just make sure you get your heights right. Really important. So I think I think for lots of us, you do you sort of put a shelf together, or you decide you're going to try and arrange something on a table, and it doesn't look right, and you can't, you know, you don't know how to fix it. And I suppose that's it, isn't it? It's just keeping on going and just keep on going. If you, if you do it and you're not happy with it, take it off, start again. Yeah. But go with it. Think about the heights that you're using. Um, think about the textures you're using because you want to add interest. You know, stack up books. I would show you my books, but my laptop is yeah. stacked, on them, stacked on the top of them. Um, but use books, you know, coffee table books, three or five coffee table books stacked up and then put something on top of it. That adds height. You know, it's all about adding height, creating little points of interest that will pull it all together. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good tip. If you don't have any, a particularly tall candlestick or anything, you can add height. Yes, absolutely. Use books. Or, you know, put your plant on top of your little thing of yeah. books. You know, there's lots of ways of doing it um, just to push, pull it up mm. a bit. Or, you know, put a, if you're doing a sideboard, put a piece of art behind it or a couple of bits of art or even layer the bits of art on top of each other just to make, you know, create that point. Yeah. yeah. Um, and coming back to the plants, Lisa, because that's they're such a feature of your um, of your home. Um, do you do you ever use artificial plants as well? Are your plants all, all real plants? Yes. No, they're not all real at all. Um, the ones that you can see here are real, but the ones over in that corner are not. I'm a massive fan of veggie yeah. plants. <laughs> I think they're great. Um, in fact, where have I seen some really good ones recently? Lara Do have got some amazing ones, and they've got loads as well. Mm -hmm. um, especially, I love um, a faux trailer as well. A faux trailing plant, they're amazing. I've got quite a few of those. They're also really good... Um, for bathrooms, if they don't get any much natural light, I've got loads of um, fake plants in my bathroom because mm -hmm. there's no natural light in there. Um, so yeah, definitely I wouldn't, and I mix them up as well. So I just said I've got some fake ones over there. Uh, you wouldn't even, no one would even know the difference. You know, oh, mix them, mix them up, makes no difference. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And in terms of other styling tips too, Lisa, do, do you have any tips for styling coffee tables? Um, well, I'm, in fact, this is a shame I can't show you, but I'm, I'm again, a big, if you've got a coffee table, a round coffee table, a rectangular coffee table, a square coffee table, I always like to have a bit of something in the centre, and I quite like um, using a tray 
just to, to um, anchor the middle, you know, anchor the look. So I will always put a tray. I mean, this is my dining table that sits on top of at the moment. And I've got a big tray in the middle and I use that. I put some candlesticks on it, a plant, you know, a couple of little ornaments and it just creates a central area. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, if you're doing a coffee table, I would always add a few books, um, candle, some lovely matches, um, just you know and again a plant adding some height you don't want everything at the same level that's a no-no not you know it's just because it it's you want to pull it up a bit so a plant in the middle not a massive plant just a little plant with a few ornaments um, candle coffee table books but a good place if you're a good place to start if you want to start a coffee table is to get a really nice tray or a, a, a platter and then put that in the middle and then you know start from there yeah, so good for making things look tidy as well, isn't it? You can have your remote controls always a no-no. Yeah, yeah. Stay away from remote controls. Um, and Clara has a good question about um, I think about about scale. Do you think using a using big things, so big pictures and and big um, ornaments and lamps and things in a small room, do you think that can make the room feel cluttered, or do you think it can actually make your eye sort of make it look a bit bigger? No, I think I love it. So that whole playing with scale thing, really, it does draw the eye and create a focal point. I absolutely agree. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I know in terms of um, sort of refining what you already own, um, we talked before, Lisa, about, about just sort of rearranging your furniture. Mm -hmm. um, how, how did you have any tips for that, too, for sort of how you can just switch a room up a little bit by, um, by just moving things around, changing, say, the position of the chairs, that sort of thing? Yes, totally. I mean, rugs are another really good way just to up, you know, just to up the look. So mm -hmm. I've got um, quite a lot of rugs in my home. Most of them are vintage that I've bought from charity shops, to be honest, or jute, you know, jute, jute rugs are really, really good, really flexible for your space. Um, so just swapping a rug, moving, like I um, have just painted my front door and I just swapped the rugs over. <laughs> I just swapped the runners and just swapping the runners just created a whole new look. It's just yeah. mad, you know, that it should make such a difference. Um, I'm also always moving. I've got a selection of side tables, again, most of which I've got from charity shops, and I just move them around my house. So um, I've got a family room in there with a sofa, and I swap that around all the time. I, um, you know, sometimes I replace the, the side table with a plant. I put the side table in a different room. Just, you know, always keeping it fresh. And especially at the moment, when we're all in our homes all the time. <laughs> we're not going anywhere. Um, it's just having that new fresh feeling makes such a difference, you know, just to have that little boost, you know, that you can go in. I um, I did some, I put some art up in my hallway the other day, I painted it, and I, it's just a repaint, nothing exciting, and I put some new art up. But it made such a difference, and I kept just walking into the space and going, oh, I really like that. And it made me feel really, really good. Just that little change, you know, it just, it makes yeah. a real difference. It's because you're, you're in your space so much. I think that's it isn't it we all so, so many of us kind of put a room together or or you know put a shelf together or put some things on a mantelpiece and then you just leave it for ages and um sort of think well that's done and then yeah. kind of actually just making a few small changes can oh, just actually do good things about it. it really does and it can change the way that you feel about your house you know just something and it doesn't cost money you know you're not talking about spending loads of cash it's just yeah. looking at what you've got and working out how you can use it. You know, I've got a, I've got an old suitcase chest thing, and it's been it's been in literally every room of my house as a different. It's been a bedside table, it's been a coffee table, it's been a side table. It's just literally been everywhere. Now it's in my office, but you know, you can just looking at how you can use things in a different way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and we've, we've had a few questions going back to the gallery walls about um, the colour of the walls too. I mean, do, you, do you, you have a lot of sort of pale pale walls in your house, Lisa. Um, have, have you ever sort of done a gallery wall using darker colours or even wallpaper? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I, there's a reason, a lot of the walls in my house are really pale. And the reason mm -hmm. that is, is because I have, I, I like things on the wall. <laughs> I like having a lot of things on the wall. Um, and 
what I find is, is that if I put a color on the wall or I put wallpaper especially on the wall, then mm. for me, it's too much. Yeah. It doesn't really work because it takes, it draws the attention away from the art, which for me is the main point of it. So mm. I know it is, I mean, it's a very maximalist look, I think. People, you know, it's, it's very common to put art on wallpaper. Um, mm. But I suppose, it, you know, it depends on your style. You know, it's whatever your core style is, really. It's perfectly, you know, nice. You know, if that's what you love, then that's what you should do. But for me, in my own house, um, I keep my walls very neutral. Um, and my floors are really neutral, actually, as well. Because um, yeah. then what that means is I can be really flexible with what I put in the space. Yeah. So it means that I can move anything from one room to another because it's all very neutral. Yeah, that's a really good tip, actually, that you can, you can then, it gives you more flexibility to move things around, doesn't it? Yeah, you don't have to, um, you've got that room painted that colour, so that piece of furniture or artwork has to stay in the yeah. you know, do. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's a great tip. Um, great, well, I think we're sort of time's about up. So um, thank you so much, Lisa. It's been yeah, so fun. inspiring and so much really brilliant advice. Um, and thank you so much to everyone who's been watching this evening thank you to everyone who's tuned in for um the whole series and i hope it's given you lots of ideas and inspiration for making some changes to your home so thank you so much everyone thank you lisa yes, and, thank, um, you for me. thank you everyone for watching thank you and um hope to see everyone again soon thanks goodbye